Blessed are you, Lord our God. Glorious is your name in all the earth. We celebrate who you are and all that you've done with, for us. You hold our lives in your hands and catch us when we stumble. So we come together today, led by your spirit. And we worship you to sing your praise to confess our mistakes and to receive your love and mercy. Mercy was made possible through your sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. Be present among us as we worship you and as we open ourselves to your word today. To you be all glory now and forever, amen.
Amen. Thanks, Job and Jessica Lynn, for leading us into worship. And Dan's on vacation and enjoying that. And we, uh, we're so appreciative of y'all stepping in. I want to thank you for leading us into worship this morning. We appreciate that. Uh, so good to have you. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. It's Sunday, and we're so glad that you are streaming at home with us, or you're on the couch, or um, as I talked to some people yesterday, they're out in their car streaming on their iPhone. So it was great. Uh, it's so good to have you. If you wouldn't mind checking in somehow, uh, somewhere, whether you're on Facebook, go ahead and check in by writing, hey, I'm here worshiping, who you're worshiping with. If you're on the platform, go ahead and take a few moments and fill out your Connect card or, or you're here in the service, you can always do that. You can drop on our website right now and fill out that Connect card. Let us know that you're worshiping with us, who that is. Also gives you an opportunity to um, let us know if there's anything and anything at all that we can pray with you for and come beside you and join you in prayer and, and guide you through that. And we just uh, take advantage of that. Uh, feel free at any time to say, hey, I'm worshiping, I made it, it was a long week, but I'm glad you're here, and I'm so glad you did. Uh, just a few announcements this morning, Coffee with Clark, Tuesday at 7.30, uh, a great time for you just to stop in, say hello, chat it up, um, enjoy some FaceTime with some folks, um, whether you're at home or, or you're just getting through the week, uh, I encourage you to drop in with uh, Coffee at Clark on Tuesdays at 7.30. And then if you didn't check it out, and we're so excited that today we'll be premiering our virtual Sunday school. I know it might be a little while before we're able to come back and meet together with Sunday school, but what we're going to do is feature a, a different teacher for about a four-week series, and uh, starting today, right after the 10 o'clock online premiere on the platform and YouTube, you can check out Joellen Moose. And she'll be walking you through a lesson. Um, if maybe you don't have time, maybe you're going to go and, and turn on the grill after service. That's okay. She'll be on YouTube all week. And we're going to try to do that for the rest of the summer. We'll have uh, different teachers come on and uh, kind of fill that void that some of you have been asking for for Sunday school. I know you miss Sunday school. So um, virtual Sunday school will be great. And we'd encourage you to do that. And then this Tuesday is the Timothy Team Tour Bus. And so we, uh, we love the opportunity to come and hang out with your kids in a very socially distant and safe manner. We actually don't even leave the bus. So we, we drive up, we pull up, we have some fun, uh, some play some live music, and we get to connect with your kids. And if you'd like us to do that, go ahead and go to our website. There is a form that you can fill out to let us know your address and a couple of time slots that we will come to you. And you can fill that out and let us know. And it's always so much fun to come hang out um, with your students and your kiddos for just a little while. And, uh, and, and the tour bus has been great fun. And so we'll hope to do that throughout the summer. Um, we're glad you're here. We're so glad you made it. And we're also glad that you are continuing to give. Thank you so much for giving your offering and your tithes. And your, um, lo some of you donated to OMP. We appreciate that. Uh, you can continue to do that three ways. You can mail in your offering. Um, you can continue to go to the website. And if you haven't tried it yet, I dare you to text and give to 479 Three three four zero eight eight eight, and that's an easy way to give. And so many of you gave not only your time, you made cookies, and you blessed some students this week, and we're so appreciative of that. A big shout out to Brooke Coffee and Ashley who organized uh, the meals and cooked. Uh, those of you guys who came out and cooked a, a dinner or, or dropped off cookies and ice cream, we uh, really appreciate it. Um, and we're so thankful for the students who showed up and worked and blessed people, and they had a great time. We're hoping maybe next week to show some pictures and put together a slideshow for you to catch. Um, it'll be super exciting to see all that they did and maybe get some testimonies in there from students once they recover and they sleep, and it'll be good. So we appreciate you doing that. Um, we want to take this time right now before we pray um, for joys and concerns. If you want to go ahead on Facebook to maybe shout out something you'd like folks online to see and pray for you about, if you're on the platform, you can do that one of two ways, a very open and public way is to write that prayer request on the platform thread, or there is a prayer request button um, that you can take advantage of, a little more private, and um, that we'd be happy to do that. And know that you can always text or email or call any member of the staff or, or someone in our congregation, and we'd love to pray with you and, and, and be with you in a time of need or something that you'd like to pray request for. So uh, let's, let's lift it up to the Lord, um, pray over our tithes and offerings and pray over the rest of the service. Let's pray. God, we are so grateful today to worship together. We know we're, we're distant. Um, we're, I mean, there's a lot of us not even in the same neighborhood, but we know that by your spirit, you've united the body of Christ to come and to worship together, and we're so grateful for that opportunity. We pray, Lord, that your spirit would be with us today as we continue to worship together. 
Lord, we're so grateful for an opportunity of service in our community through Ozark Mission Project. Um, thank you for being with our students and keeping them safe. Um, we pray, Lord, that um, every time those homeowners and those um, people see those ramps that have been fixed and stained and installed, that they would know that um, God loves them and that, that they would have a visible a reminder of your goodness, not necessarily of our kindness, but of your goodness and your faithfulness and your presence in their lives. And we pray that that's a reminder to them every time that they walk on it or, or, or they are on it and use it. We pray for that. Lord, we pray over our tithes and offerings, Lord, that you would bless the ministry that you're doing here in this community. God, that you would continue to be with the, the For Their Future campaign as we, uh, we get so close to starting and doing some great things. Father, we thank you for those who are con to continuing to support the ministry of that project. And we pray, Lord, that you would be with us in this time as we continue to worship. In your name we pray. Amen. life can be Thank you. 
Well, today, our Summer of Psalms rolls on. And last week, we, we looked at Psalm 42 and our thirst or desire for time with God and worshiping with the community of faith. And we remember Jesus' words about streams of living water that give us that he gives us for eternal life and that renew our whole being. Today we are looking at Psalm 34, one of the psalms that is attributed to David. And so if you've got your Bibles with you, I want to encourage you to, to open those up. Uh, we'll also have the passage on the screen. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version today. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes his boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see what that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for, uh, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions will suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord, which of you desires life, of covets and covets the many, many days to enjoy good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. So, this psalm is one of the psalms that we have an idea about why it was written. So, you'll notice if you're looking in your Bible, uh, at the top uh, there is an inscript ascription. You know, we talked about that uh, this last week about sometimes there's these ascriptions at the beginning of a psalm. It tells you maybe... Uh, how it's supposed to be sung or, re or read or, or who it was by or, or something to that effect. And so in this one, uh, we have, it says here, it says, Of David, who when he feigned madness before Abimelech, so that he drove him out and he went away. And so uh, this heading here tells us that, that, so many scholars believe that this heading tells us that this, the event that this psalm is remembering is actually from 1 Samuel 21, 10 through 15. And, to, and as you'll recall, um, that tells the story about the time when, when David was fleeing from Saul and, and he was trying to kill him. And so David makes his way to the Philistine city of, Ga of, of Gath, uh, which is ruled over by the Philistine king, whom in, day, in 1 Samuel is called Achish. Now, according to some scholars, the term Abimelech was often a title given to kings in Canaan. And so it meant father king. And so 
the servants of the king recognize David, and, and they tell the king who David is. And so David's at this point, uh, he, he's fearing for his life, and so he wants to be allowed to, to leave. And so what he does is he fakes madness. He, he starts acting like he's, uh, he starts scratching up doors and, and the gate and, and drooling all over his beard. And, and so the king is like, <laughs> what is going on with this guy? And he falls for David's ploy. He lets him go. So this psalm is identified as a psalm of thanksgiving. So David's writing the psalm of thanksgiving. And, and, and he's sharing about how God was faithful to him in the midst of his troubles. Now, the sub- subject of this psalm is, is more person, and, and it's, it's the type of psalm that most oftentimes is used in, in uh, personal devotion rather than, in, than recitation in the temple. So last week we talked about, a, we, sang a, we, we, we read a psalm that was more uh, spoken both in a devotional sense, but also in, in, a, in, a, in a, a temple sense. It could have easily been sung in a temple for those, those parched moments of our lives. But, but today is truly a, a more of a personal devotional. And so it would have been sung and prayed by an individual in their, their personal devotional time. And, and when, when they have been experiencing similar emotions to what uh, David has been experiencing. So memory and, and telling of God's actions in history, it's an important part of the faith. Not just the faith of the Hebrews, of the Israelites and Jews, but also as Christians. And, and so there's a word that's used here, todah, which, which means not only giving thanks, but also admitting and testifying as in court. In other words, it's not just saying Thank you, God. I appreciate you doing this for me. I appreciate you rescuing me. It's thanks, God. And everybody hear this. God is faithful and needs to be thanked for he has done great things for me. So that's the kind of thanks that we are we're, we're, being, uh, we're, we're talking about here. So before now, before we can give thanks, though, we oftentimes have to admit we need help. And so when help is given, we're called to testify to the one who's aided us. So, you know, you ask for help, and you give thanks, and then you tell someone, hey, by the way, God is a stand-up kind of dude. He saved me in this time of difficulty. That's a kind of a 21st century way of saying it. So in this passage, David is admitting his fears. And, and he's, he's admitting his need for help. And so he's testifying to the Lord, the Lord's aid and delivering him from fear. And he's, he's testifying to the importance of walking in righteousness before the Lord. And so as you, as we, as you look at these verses, I told you uh, previously that, that, that the, the, the Psalms are not really broken down so much in verse as they are in strokes. And so they broke up into little sections here. And so these first three verses, we have this first strophe here, and it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us all exalt his name together. And so what we have here is this, he's containing a personal vow and an invitation for the the whole community to give thanks. To give thanks to God, to to magnify and to share the name of the Lord. That that God's reputation is increased when God's people praise and share the good news. And then in verses 4 through 7, he says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. And so 
this is a, a personal account going on here of, of God's saving power. And then as we read in the eight verses, eight, verses 8 through 10, he says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Here we go with that word happy again. O oh, fear the Lord with his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Now, a, a word here that, that what we're talking about here, when we use this word, we talked about the word happy, but this word fear that's used here isn't the kind of fear that you and I are used to about being scared of something. This is more of a fear of awe and amazement, of honor, like, whoa, God, thank you. I'm in amazement of your authority and your power. And so people who fear God, aren't, as we talk about in the Bible, aren't always fearing in a scared sense. They're in an awe and an amazement of God's power and authority. And so that's what we're talking about here when this word is used here. So he's encouraging the community to taste and to see and to, to say and judge and discern that the, the Lord is good and he ought to be honored and and, um, and you should be amazed and in awe of his authority. And then verses 11 through 22, kind of the second half, the psalmist moving from a, a personal witness to begin to teach wisdom to the community, to embrace righteous living, which produces faithful fruit, because it's a life that's centered on the Lord. We're to keep our tongue from evil, which means to to use our words and our actions, they ought to be consistent with the God that we serve. That we're called to do good and to not do harm to others. That we're told to seek peace and pursue it. And it's also a life, we should be exhibiting a life that is testifying to the faithfulness and the loving kindness of God. And pursue holiness or righteous obedience because God has already been faithful to us. And so as we seek him, we will find him if we seek him with our whole heart. And we also have this promise throughout the psalm that while suffering is a reality for everyone, even God's people, God promises to be near to us. And that ultimate deliverance will be from the Lord. Not only are we called to holy fear and to trust in God. And to pursue holiness. In verses, verse 5, David writes, look to him. And be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. One translation has, those who look to him are radiant, their faces are never covered with shame. You know, the end of the book of Daniel, Daniel's given this vision of those who seek God and his blessings and, the, and righteous living. So in Daniel 12, 3, he writes, Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. You know, one definition of the word radiant is radiating rays or reflecting beams of light. So as people of faith, we are invited to reflect the light and the love of God in every area of our life. In fact, Paul even writes this in his letter to the Philippians. As he says in Philippians 2, 13 through 15, he says, For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring, and arguing so that you may be blameless and innocent children of God, without blemish in the midst of a crooked or per and perverse generation 
in which you shine like stars in the world. 1 John 4, 5 shares that God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. We believe that the light and love of God that we are called to reflect is most clearly revealed in His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the full revelation of God's extravagant and sacrificial love for each and every one of us. That God is, the, uh, God is love and the ultimate reality in the universe. That no matter what we face, we can trust that God wins and love wins and this perfect love casts out all fear. Not only are we invited to say yes to the reality of God's love, But more importantly, we are invited to participate in that love. Just this past week, young people in our church have been participating in love. They've been helping out people that they don't know or didn't know before them. Building wheelchair ramps for children, for Adults, for people who are in need, making a difference in the lives of our neighbors near us. That is radiating love. When we participating in demonstrating the reality of God's love, when we do these things to a, a disbelieving and skeptical world, it's like what Methodist theologian James Bryan Smith calls. This is Jesus with skin. It's meaning we got skin in the game. Jesus has skin in the game. And guess what? You and I are it. When we radiate God's unimaginable love, we take on the hands and feet of Christ. We become his physical embodiment in the world. I believe that during this time, the most Christ-like thing that we can do is to learn, lean into the psalmist called the righteous living. As Francis of Assisi is credited with saying, to preach Christ and when necessary, to use words. We have an opportunity to preach Christ with every encounter that we live on our life by radiating his love to others. So I want to encourage you not to to give in to fear. To make sure that our tongues are not a source of evil, but are a source of good. And let us use our whole lives and our actions to radiate the love of God everyone we meet and to be Jesus with skin would you pray with me oh gracious and loving God Lord you call us to radiate your love to others let us be so bold as to live our life as a radiant reflection of your son who you sent to be our savior and to be a light unto the world Let us radiate that in all of our actions and all of our words. Let us be the embodiment of Christ in this world. This, Lord, we pray in your most holy name. Amen. Our closing song is a song of invitation. And it is an invitation to... Exhibit all that we are with our heart. Let us sing now together as we close out this time together. Here's my heart. my heart Lord here's my heart Lord 
Go out and be the light of Christ in the world. Radiate his love to everyone you meet. Go now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you next week.